Tonight, OSU celebrates Earth Day by being the most green campus in the country. This is Ashley Van Pelt, and tonight on Beaver News, spring is in the air here at Corvallis' Farmer's Market. Then, we get an inside look at what it means to be an archaeologist. We'll have all that and more on tonight's episode of the Beaver News. Good evening and happy Earth Day and welcome to your Monday night edition of the Beaver News. I'm Theo Hendrickson. And I'm Megan Davis. We're glad you could join us this evening. Earth Day is all about giving back to the Earth and respecting and acknowledging our natural resources. And there's no better way to respect the Earth than by going green, which is exactly what OSU is doing. The Princeton Review Guide of 322 Greenest Colleges has given Oregon State University a near-perfect rating for being the most green college in the United States. The Princeton Review analyzed data from a 50-question survey concerning campus infrastructure, course offerings, and career preparation towards their commitment to the environment and its sustainability. OSU's final score was a remarkable 98 out of 99 possible points. The Princeton Review commended OSU for its history of creating innovative projects to reduce energy use and meet its goal of climate neutrality by 2024. In celebration of Earth Day and of keeping our planet green and clean, you can drop by the MU Quad tomorrow, April 23rd, between 11 a.m. and 3 p.m. and celebrate Earth Week, a 13-year strong tradition. This year's Earth Week event will feature a fair of over 50 environmental organizations that will offer activities, free styrofoam recycling, native plant sales, and more. This year's event in particular is special because it marks the 100-year anniversary of the planting of the elm trees that stand in the library quad. OSU planning to make the power grid a bit more efficient, but this update might end up putting some people in the dark. Starting last week, Pacific Power & Light in Corvallis made plans to systematically update power grids in sections of campus. Every weekend this month, Pacific Power will shut off electricity in several buildings at OSU to replace old switches that bring electricity into the buildings from the outside lines. This update has been prompted by the recent number of power outages that have occurred over the past several years. Current systems have also led to errors that have resulted in the electrical fires in the steam tunnels under campus and failed alarm systems. On Sunday, Pacific Power updated power systems in the Milne Computer Lab, Kidder Hall, and Bexel Hall. The university plans to allow two more weekends for further electrical work. Looking for a way to support the Corvallis community but can't think of anything? The Corvallis Farmer's Market has arrived. The Corvallis Farmer's Market kicked off the season on Saturday with games for kids, great food, and good at community activities. Booths were set up all along the boardwalk in downtown Corvallis on 1st Street with lots of different items for sale, ranging from jellies and breads to plants, meats, and locally grown fruits and veggies. The Corvallis Farmer's Market will take place every Saturday and Wednesday from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. and will run through November 27th. We sent out our Beaver News reporter, Ashley Van Pelt, to see what's fresh at the Farmer's Market. With spring term comes spring weather, bringing Corvallis Farmer's Market. Local growers bring in a variety of products, produce, and even poultry. So our farm's name is Afton Field Farm, and we sell uh, meat and poultry and eggs. We also have honey available at certain times of the year. Um, I started selling here at the Corvallis Farmer's Market when I was uh, 11 years old in 1991, um, basically the first year that the market started. Um, and have since expanded into raising um, different types of livestock. The Farmer's Market offers more than just food. Music and dance were amongst some of the entertainment that could be seen this past Saturday. Family, friends, and even pets can walk the market located on 1st Street every Wednesday and Saturday from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. And it's the first uh, Farmer's Market along the river. They have one all winter, of course, at the fairgrounds. but. Uh, there's lots of other kids, we see our friends, we see dogs, we get to run around and it was a pretty nice day for it being April, so um, we're certainly, uh, a lot of times we do buy produce here, but I haven't bought any yet today. But, so we were kind of coming down here to see our friends and get some activity. This is Ashley Van Pelt and Kylie Dunnett with the Beaver News. 
The Beaver News has heard a lot about how students re student readers are missing their favorite section in the Daily Barometer. That's why we've decided to create our own Corvallis Police Beat. Tonight, Theo Hendrickson has our report. This weekend, Corvallis State Police found Brandon Hasem stumbling across the Jefferson Avenue near the north side of McNary Hall. Hasem, who had been previously banned from OSU property, was found in possession of a small bag of marijuana without a medical license. Hasem was transported to the Benton County Correctional Facility, where he registered a BAC of 0.31%. Hasem has been cited for criminal trespassing in the second degree and possession of a controlled substance. Following suit, Resident assistants from Wilson Hall alerted University Dispatch to the distinct smell of marijuana coming from a room in Wilson Hall. Authorities found students Ryan Alston and Joshua Miller in possession of marijuana, a small glass pipe and a glass bubbler, both containing residue. Alston Miller and Miller were cited for possession of a controlled substance and Alston was issued an exclusion from all OSU property by the Department of Public Safety based on his previous behavior and drug possession. On April 13th at around 4 p.m., police responded to a multiple vehicle crash involving students Joan Mills, Richard Heater, and Wayne Hanslevin. According to reports, Mills and Heater were eastern bound on Highway 34 and had stopped at a stoplight when Wayne Hanslevin, who was also eastern bound, crashed into the rear of Mills' vehicle. This crash resulted in a rear collision with Heater's vehicle. Authorities arrested Hanslevin for DUII after he failed a field sobriety test. Thankfully, no injuries were reported. And that's your police update. Beware the zombies roaming around campus. Spring term returns with OSU's annual Humans vs. Zombies outdoor-only tag game. This week-long game features teams of students playing roles as humans and zombies as they fight to survive the week. Players can be seen carrying around colorful Nerf blaster toys and have been instructed to only shoot other players. Game moderators will also be wearing identifiable arm and headbands. If any students or staff have concerns, they are urged to contact Campus Public Safety non-emergency number and student players are required to stop what they are doing if asked so by a community or campus member. Take care when crossing the street, as one study shows that pedestrians could be in danger. In a study done by David Hurwitz, OSU Assistant Professor of Transportation Engineering, Hurwitz found that drivers don't pay attention to pedestrians 5% of the time that they are turning left. This research was found during a full scared driving simulator that monitored the specific eye movements of the drivers that performed the simulation. Hurwitz noted in his study that most pedestrian crashes happen at crosswalks and that pedestrians have a false sense of security. Due to the dangers of the permitted left turn, researchers concluded that the state ban permitted left turns to ensure the safety of pedestrians in crosswalks. This Friday, OSU will host Bring Your Kids to Campus Day as a way to celebrate the importance of education, family, and to highlight the numerous family-friendly activities on campus. Every family that registers a child will receive a use, reusable lunch bag with a snack and water bottle provided by Child Care and Family Resources, Be Well, Be Orange, and Pacific Source Healthy Life. Parents must remain with their children at all times unless otherwise noted. For more information, you can go online to see a list of the activities being offered and when and where your day will begin. Tonight, the Beaver News is proud to present the first installment in an investigative series produced by Beaver News reporter Hayden Wilcox. Over the summer, Hayden was able to travel with Associate Professor of Anthropology, Dr. Lauren Davis, for an inside look at an OSU archaeological field school and what it means to be an archaeologist. This report was supported by OSU and the Bureau of Land Management. ...of so much interest to archaeology students at the bottom of the Salmon River Canyon. But these students are on a mission to unearth a past long lost to time. We're putting up a cover over the site because it gets very hot out here. So we've got to get this giant tarp over the site so we can get them out of the shade. And then when we, once we get that up, we have to unload about six to 7,000 sandbags that we put in the site um, at the end of the excavation last year. So here we are at the Cooper's Ferry site in the Lower Salmon River Canyon, and we're beginning the 2012 field season by taking the back dirt off of our excavation unit from the year before. So here the students are shoveling off a layer of dirt that we have that's covering some wire fencing. 
The den is laying on top of thousands of sandbags that they're going to take out of the ground. Each sandbag contains dirt that we've excavated in previous years. And it's much easier to throw the sandbags out of the hole than it is to redig the dirt over and over and over again. The intense heat only drives their motivation to reach their goal to uncover artifacts that have not seen the light of day in thousands of years. As we open up the site to start a new season, the students will find a level form that is information about the last excavation level that was conducted in each of the different squares so we know exactly where to take off from where the last students ended. So we finally exposed the floor here after getting all the sandbags off. And so now that we've got that, the whole time we're doing that, some of them are leaking and getting the um, sediment onto the bottom of the floor here where we have excavated the past three years. And so what we got to do is get all of the sediment off to make sure we can clean it up before we can start excavating again. These eager minds will utilize knowledge and skill to bring the past back into the light and in the process will attempt to rewrite the history books. This is Hayden Wilcox reporting from Cooper's Ferry Archaeological Field School for the Beaver News. We will be continuing to run this segment every night, Monday through Thursday, with coverage of different subjects every night. Tune in tomorrow as Hayden shows us what kinds of tools archaeologists use and what the process of excavation is. With homework, midterms, projects, and finals constantly on the minds of students, it's hard not to become a little flustered. If you're feeling the midterm blues, Kristen Burleson of Queen Bee Organizing has planned workshops that are available for you to help relieve stress and manage time through creating more organized work and home environments. You can even leave with a few easy tips about managing the worries of everyday life a little bit easier. The seminar will take place tomorrow at 12.30 p.m. and again at 2 in the MU Joyce Powell Leadership Room. A two-year probation period has been proposed against the University of Oregon in regards to violating NCAA football recruiting regulations. This probation would include a loss of one scholarship for the next three years. The NCAA began an in-depth investigation after reports were made about Oregon paying Willie Lyles and Complete Scouting Services in Houston, Texas $25,000 for their recruiting services. According to the report, these purchases were made during the time that former coach Chip Kelly was leading the team. Reports indicate that the new Oregon coach, Mark Helfrich, will address the issue. The NCAA has not commented about the ongoing investigation, and a decision hasn't been made yet as to the outcome for Oregon. Now it's time to find out what happened over the weekend with our Beaver baseball team. Thanks, Theo. The OSU baseball team scored big on Wednesday with a 5-1 victory against University of Portland. The now number 5 Beavers struck first, scoring one on a single in the third inning. The Beavers then took the lead again in the fifth inning and continued their streak to the end. Joe Etzel Field, which holds a capacity of over 1,000 people, was sold out for this non-conference game. This game was the last between the two schools for this season. On, on Friday, the OSU Beavers returned to the field with a Pac-12 series against Washington and Seattle. With this game, the Beavers are looking for their second consecutive Pac-12 sweep. Well, that's all the time we have for you tonight. I'm Theo Hendrickson. And I'm Megan Davis. We're glad you could join us this evening. For more of your Beaver news, you can watch us on YouTube, like us on Facebook, or follow us on Twitter at Beaver News. Have a good night.